Welcome back to Team Fat Kid Choose the Fat. This is Jason. This is Alex. This is Dooley. All right, so uh, we've been at this all day for. <laughs> this sounds really good, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you <clears throat> like it. <clears throat> all right. So check it out. So I got a couple topics. Um, first things first. I have a retraction from one of our earlier podcasts. Uh, I was wrong about the Michelin star starting in the United States. It actually started in Paris. But it is by the Michelin Tire Company. Everything else that I said other than that was true. It started in 1904 um, as a guide around Paris to find... And they spell tire with a Y, by the way. Weird. But just thought I'd throw that in there. Fun fact. Tire Company. Michelin tier. Heard. Tier. <laughs> Alright, so I just wanted to get that out of the way. Mobby, I don't want any Frenchmen coming over here trying to start some fights. Oh. French people starting <laughs> fights. <Okay. laughs> Alright, so I wanted to start outside of that start. I've got a new start. Alright, so check it out. Um, I believe, like, um, it's almost like our mission statement. Like, I think the most dangerous thing said um, in a kitchen or just in general, would be that we've always done it that way. Oh, I was going to say zero fucks given, but okay. <laughs> the most dangerous thing. <laughs> zero fucks given. <laughs> so, we've always done it that way, I believe, pulls away from change. Like, you'll never change if you have that mentality. And I think here at Team Fat Kid, we go 100% the other fucking direction. We've never done it that way. <laughs> you guys made this before? I mean, yeah, kind of. <clears throat> I think the only thing that we do the same is just the usual suspects. Well, yeah, I mean, like, that's seasoning, man. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, yeah, well, cleaning. Let's talk about <laughs> that for a second. Like, we always do it the same. We talked about pork rub earlier. <laughs> like, did you write down the recipe for a pork rub? Like, no. No. We just <clears throat> grabbed what we had last time and threw it together. Like, we, we got the right ingredients. Uh, like, what's a recipe? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh... I mean, at some point, we are going to have to write down some recipes, because I know a lot of you guys want them. Yeah, and I, we've teased and talked about doing a cookbook, um, but it's so hard for us to do a cookbook because we don't really measure shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a pinch of this, an ass fuckload of that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this for so long, it's just natural. Like, yeah, it's what, I mean, that's... We've been doing this for so long, and... We've been doing this for so long, we still can't get the podcast to work right. <laughs> um, so, but again, going back to that statement, I think like it goes in like your normal life as well. Like if you've always done something in the same way, like it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way to do it. Oh, I agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. So it's, I mean, I think it's just hard to change. If people don't want to because it's like, outside the norm. It takes a little extra effort. Yeah, like. Oh, I've, I've always done it like this, so that's the way it's done. I had that issue the other day. Just because you've always done it that way doesn't make it right. Now, if it was like... You could do it wrong all the damn time, and you just don't know. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> like, like if, it, if it was like the, uh, was it, uh, where the 86 came from? The was, Monaco's? Yeah, like, that's, like, if you did that that way forever, and it's selling the fuck out, okay, but... Okay, I'm not saying, <laughs> alright. You're talking about the shitty shits. No, I'm just talking about in general. Like, okay, we're saying, like, Delmonico, you want to bring that up. And, like, we're talking about uh, Delmonico steak or, was it Delmonico? Yeah, this is Delmonico steak and Delmonico's. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> uh, so, like, when you talk about that, like, even, I think just because it's great and everyone likes it, I'm not saying that it's impossible to improve on something that's, figuratively speaking, perfect. That, that kind of is our mission statement. Like we yeah, want to take something that everybody has done or has loved or has made or whatever and, and like, wow, well, no, we're going to do it better. Yeah, I mean, or at least give her a damn this try. And you're like, <laughs> it doesn't always turn out better. I mean, we call those learning experiences. Learning experiences, that's right. <laughs> like, you know what we learned? Not to eat a whole damn Carolina Reaper. That is a learning experience. <laughs> you learn a couple things about yourself. <laughs> Uh, with the, Can we really say we learned that one? <clears throat> We've already talked about doing it again at some point in the future. Like, well, I doubt it will be soon, but we're dumb enough to do it again. Yes. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of that, uh, me and Jason are talking. I'm planning on taking a garden space from our house that we have right now and start just making peppers. 
There's one called uh, Apocalypse of the South or some shit like that. It's supposed to be hotter than the Carolina Reaper. This brings up a good song. Freedom's flying. Oh, God. I love freedom. I'm oh, God, and the Julie Pepper gardening situation. <laughs> Can you imagine Julie trying to garden? Bitch, watch it happen. <laughs> what you want me to bring over today? You want some peppers? You want some fucking... All okay, right, so... Julie and I were at a bar a few weeks ago, and we got the... I don't even want to say it was a perfect sales pitch, but they did everything by the book. And, like, I don't. I think Dooley was oblivious to the point that it was happening <laughs> to us. I think so, because I'm not really remembering uh, There was these two guys sitting at a bar, and, like, you know, we are sitting there at a bar, and they strike up a conversation, and they did, like, uh, yeah. all the fucking sales tactics. Like, first they divided us. So we were talking like they literally like sat. One was like, talking to you. One was talking to Dooley. Yeah, like, and like where they sat so like someone too. they like one dude just walked up between us and started this whole conversation with Dooley while this other guy was trying to get me to throw in fucking on a Chick Fil A. Like I was like, dude. I was like, first off, dude. Like when he started his sales pitch because as I watched everything going on around me and I watched it happen, I was like, all right, look. I'll let you pitch your sales pitch. I just want you to know this is falling on deaf ears, bro, because you are not getting my money. Like, it's, he's like, well, okay, I'm going to talk to you about it anyway. Yeah, you look at the stack of cards, Dwayne. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay, Holy so, what, shit. so what I just did was I forgot I had his cards in my wallet still. I'm, we're not saying names, but... Yeah, like, he gave yeah, me a stack of his cards. Yeah, I mean, it was, cards, too. Yeah, this is a really nice card. Like, <laughs> it's like on construction paper or something, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, I, I'm pretty sure, though, that this company's not even in restaurants. No. Like, that's... No, 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 no. He's definitely not in I, restaurants. He's I know to, that company. He's trying to get in said restaurants. What, but uh, in a Chick-fil-A? Uh, Specifically? Was, like, well, he was... He was very specific about it being a Chick-fil-A because he was like... Don't get me wrong. I like Chick-fil-A. It sounded negative to all you Chick-fil-A lovers. That was, it was not a knock on Chick-fil-A. I'm just saying, what? why was he so adamant on Chick-fil-A? He was... Was McDonald's he, too expensive? I don't know. Like his, <laughs> his point was that, like, you know, the Chick-fil-A would be, like, the nest egg that just makes... Like, if we all threw in on a Chick-fil-A, the Chick-fil-A, you know, is going to make money. And... Then you go on and you take the Chick Fil A money, and that's just constantly producing. And you take that money and then go on different ventures. Like he's like, we would, you know, eventually, yes, we would initially have to start up a Chick Fil A. And he like he he was a good sales pitch, you know. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not giving you that amount of money. Like it's like that'll never fucking happen because I don't even know you, dude. I met you at a bar, like today. Yeah, like five <laughs> minutes ago, and you're asking me for an exorbitant <laughs> amount of money. Like, I was like, this ain't happening, dude. Like. So, I, like, you said there were two of them. Clearly they have an idea about this already. Do, it, like, do they both work for the same company? Are they buddies? Like, how... how? I think one of them was, like, a lawyer or some shit. No, no, no. I don't know. I honestly, like, I, I, I stopped listening. <laughs> dude, I was just... Mm. You're not getting my money. Like, his idea was good on paper, but, dude, I don't know you. And for me to, like, just fork over a shit ton of fucking money and he's like oh yeah dude we'll be like the board of directors like we'll get other people to pitch in you know, like a board of directors of one Chick-fil-A does he plan on working at this Chick-fil-A I don't know <laughs> like, I was like I was so fucking confused about coming, the whole coming like, from someone who's worked in restaurants like especially I've seen a lot of small owners if you want to be successful guess what you're working yes you have like, to work you, you are going to work at your store they're and I don't know, maybe if you have, like, a lot of money to start with, maybe it's one thing, but I'm assuming, like, a $250,000 restaurant... My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, fuck you people. Uh, <laughs> if you if you plan on opening something for less than half a million, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to end up working at your own restaurant if you want to see a good profit. Like, Absolutely, yeah. That's, let's just assume... That you're opening a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollar restaurant because I've seen one open for a hundred and it did pretty successful. So congratulations to you. However, let's assume a quarter <laughs> of a million dollars. So like, I don't know. You're taking a salary the first year as a manager, even though you're the owner. Let's call it forty five thousand, which seems reasonable. 
right? Yeah. Like, it's not great. No. But it's your restaurant. You're going to get a cut of the profits and so on and so forth. But so you're taking a salary. That's forty five to $50,000 you're saving not paying someone else. Right. So if you make $100,000 in profits in the first year and you don't work, you just cut that shit in half. Right. I. How do, how do you plan it? Like, yeah, let's just be the board of directors. We'll just open it. People will do our work for us. Like, <laughs> That's doesn't, not the way this works. It doesn't work like that, That is bro. not the way this works. <laughs> I mean, I've never once in my mind thought about opening a restaurant and not being there. Like, not working. You know what I mean? Like, not pulling at least 60 hours a week. You know what I mean? You're going to. You kind of have to. It's your right. shit, man. It's everything in that building is yours. We've talked like, about going into a restaurant together, and even then, it's like, oh no, like both of us are going to work there. Yeah, like I, and duly, you're you're probably going to end up working I'm gonna there. I'm going to be like, in the kitchen. <laughs> well, let's face it. Like Jason might be out front on Wednesday and in the kitchen Thursday. Both of us are there on Friday. Like, what do you want today? I don't know. What'd you do last week? I took front last week. You take front this week. I'll take back. Like <laughs> MOD shifts. Like, yeah, Basically, just, <laughs> but it's MOD shifts every day. It, yeah. it, it might just be like, what's getting hit harder? Uh, like, oh, the servers are good. Well, fuck it. They don't need a food runner or an expo. Like, I'll jump online. Like, line is drowning. That's where I'm at. That's I. I just can't imagine not having to work at a restaurant you just opened, unless, of course, again. You have enough money to literally not get a loan from the bank, or even like you just like yeah, I got this, whatever. Like I can, I can pay people. I, I can't. No, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not at that level. Like, the hell no, I'm not at that level. No, I yeah, I'll pay people. I'll pay myself. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay myself to overwork myself. Yes. And then yell at myself. You're not working hard enough. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, you're still gonna be the one. <laughs> Control like it's your, it's your money. You want to make sure it's getting used in the right ways. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, and that's like when we were talking about like cost and all that crap, and like that shit is important, like in a restaurant, and because there's such thin margins in a restaurant. Here's a great question for you. A lot of companies, um, AC companies, refrigeration companies, which sometimes are the same thing. Some of them specialize, but a lot of the, I guess, work that you know you're gonna have to get done. They do, like, PM schedules, preventative maintenance. Yes. And a lot of them, if you do PM schedules with them or preventative maintenance with them, they'll say, basically, you get, like, a discount if you are on a preventative maintenance schedule. What yeah. are your thoughts on PM schedules? Because I know that, again, a lot of smaller restaurants or even smaller chains or, you know, mom and pops don't do PM maintenance because that's a cost <coughs> that you don't necessarily have. But if your equipment breaks and you get 20% off... Right. Is it worth doing the preventative maintenance contract with them for a year? Or three? I agree with the preventative maintenance contract because I think that you spent a fortune on that equipment. And when you take care of that equipment, it'll last you even longer. Like, you know, if someone's coming in and cleaning the coils, because trust me, I'm not. I'm not going to clean the coils. <coughs> if I had, like, an air compressor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, but they spray, like, that acid wash on it and yep. shit, and, like, you know, they take care of it. I mean, like, they come in, and they'll catch a small leak before it's a big leak. Yep. They'll catch a torn gasket before it's a ripped gasket. You I'm, know I mean? I'm not quoting an actual price here, but let's just say you have a new cooler that breaks down three times in a year, and it's $500 each time. Your preventative maintenance contract for a year is $700. But you get 20% off. 20% off of the actual maintenance fees? Off like of the, the actual, actual maintenance. Work. So your $1,500 is now down to, I don't know, twelve fifty. dollars I, mean, like, I truly think, like, you know, if you're paying, if, let's say, let's call it $300 a month, like, they better look at all my damn equipment. Well, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> like, it's like $300 that's why, a that month. was like $700 a year. You know, that's... You know, I mean, I mean, I don't know what a preventative maintenance contract is. I guess it depends runs. on how many pieces of equipment you have. Yeah, I guess, and, like, the different types of equipment would be... Because you would have to have somebody who would know about all the equipment. I mean, there's restaurant repair companies out there that, like, they deal with everything from the hood system that's in the ceiling to your walk-in to your grease trap. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, I guess my point is, like, you have to weigh it out, like... It, what's the cost and is it worth it is where we're looking at. Yeah, like, that's that's where I'm at. Like, and I think, like, it, 
the work itself is definitely worth it. Now, how much does it cost is another expense that you have to lay on a brand new establishment. <clears throat> it also goes through if you get the preventative maintenance, does it break down as often? Like my example, it would have been fifteen hundred dollars to get that stuff fixed. And nineteen hundred with the preventative maintenance. But what if the preventative maintenance prevented it from breaking down one time? So now you're only paying two five hundred dollar charges. So you're at seven hundred yeah. plus a grand minus twenty percent. So you're still right at fifteen hundred and it only broke down twice instead of three times, which continues operations more smoothly. Do you think the people listening to this podcast care about a preventative maintenance <laughs> schedule <laughs> in a restaurant? <laughs> I'm hoping that there's I'm, at least a couple people in restaurants. <laughs> there's like that, that one person. This, there's like, that one person like I was totally like I was totally thinking about getting a preventative maintenance contract. <laughs> Some dude that owns a restaurant, they're like, I was listening our to our podcast. podcast. Hey, you hey know. that one guy, our podcast is directed toward you today. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> at least for the next three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll change topics and you'll be completely lost. He gave up already. He's yeah, like, oh, they they already started talking about it. Like um, it's, they're it's leaving. Done. They're leaving that subject. Yeah, we are. So what's the next one? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So I want to get back to food. Um, <coughs> and here's like going back to things Jason hates. Um. <laughs> so I I saw this the other day and it kind of hurt my brain to wrap around it. Like because I saw somebody get fish tacos on hard shell tacos. Mm. And I was so like, I want my black and mahi, but can I get those on hard shells? I was just like, that's not even right. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> I mean, as a, as as being as in an establishment, like, yes, I will do whatever you want. Why do you want this again? <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> that's going back to the. Can I get salt and pepper? The chef walks out like, what is wrong with you? This is fine. Uh, no, I, I, I'm kind I, mean, of I get it. Everybody's palate is different. I, I don't know. Like, fish tacos should be on soft shell tacos. That's just the way it is. Like, I, but again, it goes back to the beginning of this podcast. Like, just because it we've was done, done it. that way, does I mean, I, I don't know though. I, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever had a fish taco on a hard shell taco. I have, and I've done fish nachos, and you know what? I've I done prefer, fish nachos. I prefer fish nachos over hard shell fish tacos. I don't like hard shell whatsoever. I, you know what? I mean, like, I think hard I mean, shell taco I, has its place. I, I don't think it's with fish. So I, yeah, well, I mean, I just get in different moods. I will put it into, like, a soft shell taco, put some sour cream in between them, have a little... Like a double decker? Yeah. I'll do that, but I mean, just, like, to me it's too messy to just have that. Because it, like, falls apart on you? Yeah. I I don't care. Like I'm, I like hard shell tacos. I mean, I, I don't want again, fish. Nothing against hard shell tacos. I'm a I'm a tostada fan, done correctly. I, I'll eat it. Like I'm not I'm not. It's not you know where I stand on the tostada. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not a bitch about that. Should, should not I'm, exist. Like I'll eat it, but it's just like uh, I mean, I'd rather have soft. I, 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 I'm not I a picky eater whatsoever, but you know. If you're gonna eat a hard shell taco, you should eat it over a soft shell taco. So you have another taco. Yeah. Oh, dude, I mean, I posted a picture on Instagram of me eating pizza over a soft shell taco. So that it, like, just the shell. Just so, like, all the crap that dripped off, I was like, no, I got a pizza, a pizza burrito. Like, I'll tell you the truth, I've been a big fan of fish burritos lately. I'm a huge fan of fish burritos. I'm a fan I've of burritos. I've been on kick for, like, two weeks. I'm like, a fan of burritos. Fish just burritos. Everything Mexican is amazing. Well, sorry, Spanish. No, no, you were right the first time. Mexican. We're talking about Mexican food. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm okay. pretty sure they got burritos in Spain. Maybe. I'm. I'm assuming they probably have burritos everywhere at this point. But <laughs> <laughs> go to Canada. Hey, can I get a burrito? Yeah. Wait, Damn we, right. We don't have hey. burritos here. What? What is a burrito? I. You. You know what I'm doing suck. if that happens? <laughs> I'm taking my money and I'm opening up a burrito shop wherever that place is that says they don't know what a burrito is. We'll make a fortune. Like, <laughs> just have to, <laughs> all of a sudden, Canada's national food is a burrito. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mexicans are like, hey man, that's our shit, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now I got a fucking burrito poutine, bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> burrito poutine. <laughs> So is that I, I, how, I, how, how would you make that? Right? Is that like a burrito on poutine, or is that like poutine in a burrito? That's a. I don't know. We haven't gone down this road yet. I feel like a poutine burrito actually sounds pretty damn good. Yeah, like you put the poutine inside a burrito. Yeah, like, is that a fat kid Monday? 
I mean, it's, <laughs> that could it, be. It'd be different than it's di- a poutine burrito is different than a taco a burrito poutine. poutine. A, taco a taco poutine. poutine. I was gonna say I, just, I don't know how you would do a burrito poutine unless you put like a burrito on a poutine, and that's just excessive. <laughs> and, like, I love I love the idea of a poutine burrito, but a burrito poutine is. And so you can pick your poutine up all at once and eat it in a in a mobile shell. Yeah. yeah. So the again the poutine burrito sounds good, but a burrito poutine like how do you make a burrito poutine without putting it in a burrito? And there's a very I distinct would difference say that's on nacho that, fries. by the way, too. <laughs> there's a very distinct difference on that too. Poutine burrito or burrito poutine, like very distinct. Like. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that becomes taco fries. Like, yeah, but then that's hard shell. How do you nacho, make a hard shell nacho, burrito? Nacho fries, whatever, same thing. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, okay, I could see me crunching up, you know, a tortilla shell and throwing it in some poutine. That is something we should totally try. We should get, like, a 10-inch yellow corn tortilla, see if we can roll it and make, like, a hard shell burrito and just stuff it. Because there's no way you could fry it and have it, well, I guess you could try and fry it with stuff in it, but it would come out the top. I don't know. Now it's like, is that a taquito? <laughs> well, I'm thinking like, you know, the size of like a beer can, <coughs> shell around said beer can, and then you just stuff it with whatever you were about to put in it. Then you could have a hard shell burrito. It wouldn't be closed on both sides. So I, don't, I guess now still, it's a taquito. Yeah, I guess I guess it would be. A taquito. <laughs> I like how you broke it all the way down. I mean, like, hey, get, uh, just so that we could be on the same page. <laughs> what if you use two hard shell tacos, one slightly larger than the other, and it's like a cigar case where it like shuts over itself? Is that a burrito? Yes. So we have hard shell burritos. We're we can... going so deep into this now. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> this is Team Fat Kid. Yeah, yeah. How do we make a hard shell burrito? <laughs> I know, because like, if you use a soft shell and fry it, it's a chimichanga. Yeah, that's not, I, it, I mean. It's not a hard shell burrito. No. And like people, I'm sure people are like, well, you can flat top and grill it. Like, no, it doesn't count nope, as a hard shell fried. burrito. Like, you have to take a corn tortilla and fry, and fry it. That's a hard um, shell. That's what a hard shell taco is. So we make a hard shell burrito. So we need like a way to like, take the take the corn tortilla, put everything inside of it, toothpick it in, and throw it in the fryer. That's a taquito. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Welcome back to the conversation, Dooley. Holy shit. I, 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 went, I, I went away for like two seconds to go grab a beer, and I wasn't listening whatsoever. You didn't even go away. It's right there. You're yeah, in the I room. I Did you even take your headphones off? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that. But either way. So, I wasn't listening whatsoever after the headphones came off, because I was like, wow, it's so different from headphones to not headphones. The conclusion like, of this conversation is Mexican food is awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there should be Mexican food routine. all day, every day. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of, like, what kind of fish would you put into a hard shell taco? Because, like... The one I, I saw was black and mahi. Yeah, I, I, I can't... I can't get into that. I don't know. Like, maybe halibut. Maybe. It's still a white fish, but... Do you fry the fish? No. No. Fried halibut? I feel like it's a waste. We're going to say... I wasn't saying... Oh, we're definitely going to say... I wasn't saying... I wasn't meaning halibut, but would you have to fry the fish in a hard shell taco? Would you fry it, or does it have to be grilled? Now I feel like... You know, Again, I think it goes down to my head, fish. For my head to comprehend this shit, I feel like it needs to be grilled fish now in a fried shell, if that's what you're going to do. I think it has to be. Like, I, I, I can't imagine, like, a salmon hard shell taco. Just, I can't imagine a salmon taco, so... Sounds, <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't. I was just about to say, like, what do you feel about salmon in a taco? <laughs> I can see a uh, soft shell salmon taco. I think it would be I, I, I can. different. I can, but it has to, the flavors have to match with it. Like, you can't just. I'm also not a fan of salmon cakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the, yeah. I mean, I've had some good ones, but it's not, again, it's not something that I'm going to order. All right, if there was a crab cake and a salmon cake, which one are you ordering? Well, crab cake. Yeah, all day. I, you know, it might might depend on the establishment, but most of the time, crab cake. Crab cake. Do you hear? Oh. Jesus. <laughs> Why are you even here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, what? Yes. Crab all cake right. or salmon cake? Which one takes top? Which one? Like, if they were both sitting side by side and you walked up and they were like, here, have one of these, and like you were to pick one, which one would you get? Probably crab cake. Yeah. Everyone would say crab cake. Salmon cakes aren't good. I mean, I mean, I've had some good ones, but... Like, I would, I would have a salmon cake if it was there, 
and there wasn't a crab cake there. So. <laughs> you know what a salmon cake is, man? That's the scrap meat that you couldn't make into a damn steak. Yeah, hey, that was... salmon belly. Yeah, I was going to say, well, let's think about that for a second. Okay, now, if we smoke salmon belly... And made it into a salmon cake? Yeah, okay, that's different. As I said, it might depend on the establishment. Okay, but I mean, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but I mean, again... Crab cake is going to win, more often than not. So... What will segue into the place? So, in case you haven't heard on this podcast, Dooley's been blowing the hell out of this fucking vape because he got a bacon flavor, so he's trying to clear out... (laughs) I was trying to clear the old flavor so I could put the new flavor in. Right now, it's like mango bacon, but... Yeah. So, I mean... Actually, it's it's not bad. (laughs) Not bad. You get, like, the bacon first and the mango finish, so... Is it fake bacon or real bacon? Ooh. I'll have to let you know when the mango goes away. You can't tell if it's fake bacon or real bacon flavor. Well, it's I mean it's it's in which a juice. A lot of yeah, people, a lot of people that, like fake bacon. A lot of people that do the vaping thing, like you're supposed to change the coils and shit like that on the fucking thing, so you have like all the flavor from the next one when you put it in. But I talked That's, to oh, sounds like overhandling to me. <laughs> I, I, I want to overhandle your bacon. <laughs> like, dude, I've I've changed like fucking five different flavors, and it's just like you ha- yeah, you have the old flavor for a little bit, and then it kind of just goes the fuck away. So probably in like ten minutes. Like, it'll just be straight bacon. That's when Julie will join the conversation again. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> now. Yeah. All we hear from you is you sound like Darth Vader over there. <laughs> like, uh, the, the, yeah, the fucking un... Luke, I am your father. Yeah, now <laughs> your whole fucking microphone's gonna smell like that shit. Smell like bacon. <laughs> or mango, you don't know yet. <laughs> it's, it's getting to the bacon. Mango bacon? It's like inside the fucking microphone mm. now. Anyway... Okay, um, segue there, sorry. Um, while we're on a... Bacon. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about bacon. We could do a podcast. We could do it we didn't entire... Do, we we didn't do, do it. Did we talk about bacon wrap bacon? No. We didn't even talk about bacon wrap bacon. We definitely segue into bacon. Like, that's... Yeah, it's right? in your notes? Yeah. Each to it. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I haven't tried it yet. I can't talk about bacon wrap <laughs> bacon. That's right, because you had to leave early. Yes, I did. I'm exactly. still highly upset about that. <laughs> I, I bet it is fucking delicious. Like, Hang on, man. I gotta let Freedom fly over. Well, I think we're louder than Freedom right now. Okay. So I was well, a little yeah, upset. And I completely forgot about that. We could, totally could have wrapped it in foil, threw it in the oven while we were cooking uh-huh. the turkey. Uh-huh. So, pretty, by the way, guys, sure I the mentioned turkey. it earlier. But. You did. Yeah, but you did. There didn't, wasn't you, a lot of room in the oven, so. Yeah, right. It would have fit somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, last week we took a pork belly, uh, a piece of pork belly, not a Three whole pork, pork belly. belly. Three pound pork belly. We wrapped it in bacon. The video is up on Facebook. Uh, we got to finish editing it today to get it up on YouTube. Um, we had it edited and then it got my d- deleted. My be <laughs> deleted. Deleted. It got deleted. It was uh, my bad, man. Like I was trying to start a new project and I definitely did not close that shit right. Like, <laughs> 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 We're still. Like, the, We're still working out the kinks of our editing process. <laughs> this, this video that you just edited for like three hours, and then you're like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, it was, uh, like, it it was, was like 15, 20 minutes. No, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like, that bad. Yeah. For and, a nine minute and video. It's, uh, it's up there now. Like, I, I put it all back together, and I started it. So now it's just, because it was a really long rapping video. When I say rapping, that's what the <laughs> WR. <laughs> so as we're doing this bacon lattice, like uh, we had, we sped it up, and then like then we slowed it down, and then we sped it up again, and then we slowed it down. So like you weren't sitting there listening to us figure out, which honestly is probably a good idea for people to actually watch it the full version. We can put like a short version up there and then play the have the full version of us having the conversation about how we had to extend the bacon to make it longer because it wouldn't wrap. I thought I thought that we did do that. I don't know. I I I, can't I almost because I feel like we slowed down. We were like, gotta make sure that it's tight, and then you gotta put this here to overlap. And I think we did slow down during the extension of because the bacon. Because the the strips of bacon, like your average strip of bacon, was not long enough to wrap around a three pound, pound. pork belly. Yeah. So anyway, so we smoked it um, nine nine and a half something like that, and then it came out, and the bacon we. Didn't look fantastic. It looked crunchy. Was it crunchy? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was it, crunchy with a little chew and a was, whole hell of a lot of smoke. I, I would. <laughs> we definitely like, smoked it the entire time. There was no like, oh, we're gonna stop smoking and just keep it at like two hundred and two hundred fifty. Like, no. like we smoked it the entire time. Like the bacon, the outside bacon, crispy as shit. It's and black then, pork. Then the inside bacon, 
Who cares about black chicken? It was black pork. The the pork belly. I saw you cut it. I'm. St- I'm trust me. I am not happy that I had to leave. <laughs> the the, the like, pork the pork belly. Okay, wait, so the pork wait, belly wait, on wait, the inside. The, the yeah. no, it had the <laughs> it had the texture of of, of a pork loin, but way more tender because of all the fat, and there was that fat layer. Ooh, that fat, I mean, it, fat, was, fat. it was fat. What, like, Man, it was good. <laughs> it was that fatty fat fat. You know and then, saying? so I held half of it back so that you could eat it today, and then I cut half the other half up, and then Dooley was supposed to take some with him, but he left without it, and he left his computer here and everything fucking else and under the sun. He left here. I was actually I was so focused this. on leaving. <laughs> After I had to leave, I was definitely thinking about this. I watched the video like a day later, and uh, so... You were talking about, I really just want to put that on a sandwich. Yes. I feel like next time we do this, we could cut the smoke time down, which might save the blackening of the bacon. Yeah, the bacon was good. We should do, like, pork belly medallions, and then wrap them in bacon that are sandwich size. You can't see Jason's face right now, but there's he's pondering so going on. There's, there's <laughs> pondering. So, back to my story... <laughs> That Dooley left, so I had half of a pork belly already sliced, so I've already made this into a sandwich. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> the hate that's coming off of Alex's eyes right now. <laughs> you fucking traitor. So let me we tell have, you. We have a shirt that's bacon strips on bacon strips me, on bacon strips. We did bacon you. wrap bacon, and I had to leave. This is horse shit. <laughs> And we, we, we have pork, pork on pork on pork on pork. I was about to say, you're, that, that's an epic oh, meal Oh, yeah, time. sorry. All right, well, that's shout out to yeah. Epic Meal Time. Good shout great, out Epic Meal Time. Great shirt for y'all, guys. But so, but, so, I'm in complete agreement with bacon. Just, so, yes, just I, bacon. I, took, I took a sesame seed bun. I put a little barbecue sauce on the bun. Because I'm a fan of putting barbecue on the bun, not the meat. Okay. Because it soaks into the bread. Right. And my meat's not all sliding all over the damn place. And um, it's not drippy. Fair game. And then I threw a little coleslaw on that. And I was like, why did I put coleslaw on this? <laughs> You don't really I, go for coleslaw at all. No, like. no. Um, but. <laughs> it's that late night thought. Oh, well, fuck it. Like, no, well, like, as, I was, as I was doing it, like. Just because like, you've never done it that way before doesn't mean you should always do it. <laughs> well, I normally am not, am not the guy to reach for the coleslaw. No, but, I'm not either. But something not in my either. head was like, all right, that is a lot of fat. Might as well so, get my some acid. Some, so I needed some, that, that acid, that creaminess to go along with it. So, like, <clears> it, the coleslaw made it even better. If you can believe that, there is I mean, a I'm not talking about science to us. I am not talking about like a shit ton of coleslaw here, man. Like I'm talking about like I took like a normal, uh, uh, a, like, like two a, tablespoons, like two maybe. tablespoons, yeah, just enough to like break it up, you know, like because like something cool, <laughs> crunchy with something that's <coughs> fatty and hot, and then on the soggy bread. No, it wasn't really even a little soggy because I don't use that much damn sauce. So it was, it was good. <laughs> Why are you guys looking at me like that? <laughs> you know what? I'm still. I'm, I'm. This is gonna happen after this podcast. I like, literally. Did you turn the oven off? Yes. I literally cut it in half so that I would save half of it for you on your return, sir. Alex will be back. Which <laughs> is a great segue to uh, leftovers. How long do you keep them? <laughs> like, because I am a weak kind of guy. Like, like I'll go a week. Shelf life. Yeah, <laughs> shelf life. Shelf life of leftovers. That's the segue where you walked in to turn the oven on. Was Priorities. leftovers. Leftovers. How long do you keep them? I'm I'm about a week. If they're not gone in a week, I'm they're, gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna it, get rid of them. I, again, I think that depends on what it is. But oh, with you, like if, yeah, it's, we, if we it's a week, about it's fish. gone. It's past a week. Yeah, no, it's gone. It's 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 trash. It's out. I mean. I am one of those people that I, oh god, I feel bad about this. I'm definitely one of those people that's like, oh yeah, I got leftovers, but I'll just make food. And then like, like I rolled three the days dice. later, I'm like, oh, I should probably eat those leftovers. And you I rolled open the dice like, on some eight day um, Chinese food the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, wow, you got snake eyes. Like, I, I rolled the dice on that and uh, I, I, it was still good. I, okay, it's hard not to be good. With okay, well, food. we talked about Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mexican has quite the same shelf life. No, no. Maybe four days. Yeah. Like I'm a... Okay, um, taco meat, I think you can give it a week. I can get meat, but I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, okay, I Like have, a burrito yeah, that you like, bought, like, you brought home because, like, especially you couldn't like, finish it. Oh, it's a... got, like, lettuce in it. Like, how do you reheat that? Like, you don't. Like, you're either eating it cold because you're drunk. 
Or, like, it's... Like, I want wilted lettuce, please. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lily and I ate wilted lettuce on Saturday. Because uh, <laughs> I had a leftover sandwich that I wrapped in foil and threw in the fucking... Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Not <clears throat> great. It was good. It oh, got... I, I just... I, it, it's it's make not a the same. It's, oh. it's, it's, ex- it's exactly how I feel that this pork <laughs> is going to be. It's going to be delicious, but it is not going to be the same as when it first was prepared. Do we... <laughs> he was like, Billy Hunger, I'm like... I'm part of Team Fat Cat. I'm always fucking hungry. <laughs> he put the thing on and I was like, what is it? He was like, just shut up. Like, shut up. Eat <laughs> it. He brought it over to me. He's fucking like dying because he bit into it after it was in the oven for 30 minutes. <laughs> Jason's oh. not good with hot food. <laughs> I was, I he can hold it. He cannot eat it. I, I cannot hold it, but I can eat crap it. Out of my I, face. I was like, okay, well, I'll let it sit for a second because I'm on the line. Prepping it for the night and everything. It was weird because like the bread, like you could bite into the bread, but it wouldn't. It was still chewy in the middle. So, you, but you couldn't pull it off because the outside was crunchy. So your teeth just went into the sandwich <laughs> and it's held there. I'm just gonna sit then, here for a second. And then the roof of your mouth and everything is like ah fucking shit. <laughs> it's like but, a pizza burn. But I was like, oh, okay, cool. So it's like a little sub, whatever, cool. And then I bit into it and I was like, team that kid. Yeah, there's some fucking spice in this. I already know it. <laughs> bit into the bottom part of it where all the spice was I was like shit yeah, there was, oh there, yeah there was hot pepper there's right there's there. everything in there that's yeah yeah but I had like the what he was saying with the whole like hard bread fucking soft inside and trying to fucking pull it off so I have the spicy shit in my mouth I'm trying to pull off the fucking uh, oh by the way the spicy shit is like lava hot like yeah <laughs> so I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there doing like when y'all eat shit on camera you're like oh, I eat shit and I'm trying to do that shit and I look over and uh, the other line cook is like you good? Like, I was like oh, I, can't, I can't even bite off the sandwich like, Dewey's looking at me like and he said hot and looked at me it looked like he was sitting on the toilet and he was having <laughs> burns like it's hot <laughs> why is it so hot what did I eat? <laughs> come on ice cream <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Oh, that's good times. Okay, so you turn the oven back on for the pork. I turn the oven back on for the okay, pork. Okay, so we're going to have to wrap that in some boil and get that going. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we covered the leftovers and my bad idea of eating some eight-day-old Chinese food. It was still good. I still ate it. All right, I, all right. leftovers. I'd do it again. Expiration dates. Ah, good, 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 good. Um, I'm... Kind of weird. Like, I kind of stay to the expiration dates, and I have some things that, like, I'll throw out before the expiration date because I just don't trust it. Milk. Milk, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Milk, I'm with you. Milk is... When they say it expires on the 21st, oh, if it's past the 21st, it's probably done. Like, maybe the 22nd, I'll smell it and be like, eh, okay. Uh, But, like, (coughs) things like yogurt. See... Me and the producer are on way different levels on the yogurt. There's so many fucking preservatives in food these days. Like, I'll mm. open it, and it's like, oh, there's no mold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, how, when was this? This was like, oh, man, this expired like two months ago. Whatever. Okay, there's a difference between yogurt and canned food. Like, cans, you know, I'll let them go a little bit beyond the expiration date. The producer gets pissed off because, like, when I start going through the pantry, because she, like, hides crap in the back, she's not very good at the FIFO method. <laughs> <laughs> first in, first out. Yeah, right. So, um, so I'll, like, there'll be ten cans of soup in there, and they're all, like, the front five are good, and the back five probably should have been thrown away a year ago. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not like salty crackers. <laughs> we we learned salting crackers. Yeah, no, that expiration date should probably be listened to. Yep, yep. Granted, the ones we had were well what? past. I do I do want to make a note though that I went home after that video and I have salting crackers at home and looked at the expiration date and realized like oh these are six months out of date like they're going to the trash. Yeah. <laughs> because 
Who eats saltine crackers? You like, buy them one time, and you buy them like, oh, I'm having chili. You eat like a sleeve, or like and then, tuna. Yeah, like I'm gonna put tuna on them. Okay, yeah. cool. Like, and, and then, then they go, they go to shit. Yeah, like, like they just sit up in the you back of your pantry. They're, they're like they're air sealed. Like they're they're not getting you know air to them. Like oh, they'll be fine. Like no, no, they won't. I mean, no, it's it's won't. like in a shitty wax paper, man. I don't <laughs> think that that is a great barrier of air. You know what I mean? Like I'm pretty sure if you were suffocating is, or someone was trying to suffocate you and they used wax paper I think you're gonna be alright <laughs> don't test that theory kids <laughs> we're gonna test it out duly later <laughs> can you breathe <laughs> <laughs> alright so moving on from the well expiration dates yogurt, Mo- moving on from dairy, su- trying to suffocate duly with wax paper dairy, <laughs> dairy I'm really iffy about Cheese is different. I know even though, like they say, like when cheese gets moldy, you shouldn't just cut off the mold, you should throw it away. I don't believe that for one minute. See, I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, all right, cheese. I feel like it's almost the same as, like, aged beef. Just you fuck, cut off the outside, and the inside's still good. Yeah. Like, if I, all right, now if it's Swiss cheese, it's got holes in it, I cut into it, and there's mold everywhere. Like, oh, fuck that. But. What like, about blue cheese? <laughs> blue cheese is mold. For all of you that are it's like, like oh, I don't eat moldy though. cheese. Guess what? Like, blue cheese is fucking mold. Get, get over it. You love it. It's, Maybe. It's totally a different type of mold. I get that. But that, I mean, that's kind of why I feel the way I do about yogurt. Like, it's got a bacteria in it. It is kind of like, almost, I don't want to say it's a living organism, but it it may be. I don't know that much about yogurt, to be honest with you. Uh, yogurt does have live bacteria. There you go. Live, so it's a living organism. Well, some, right? not all of them. Either way. like Live I, cultures is how they put it on the, on the on the label. If, if I open it and there's no mold... Usually it's like I'm gonna eat this. If yeah. it tastes funny, it's then not I'm gonna moldy, stop. but it's bubbling mm-hmm. like botulism. Okay, yeah, see, no. <laughs> that's a different story. But if I open it, and it looks fucking regular. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a spoonful of this. Like, does it go down? Okay, yeah, all right, I'm gonna eat it. You I know? mean, the because yogurt... I hate to say it, I'm that guy. I'll, I'll stick a bunch of yogurt in my fridge and just be like, yeah, I'll eat that eventually. And the oh, producer's the same way. A month later, it's like, oh, I didn't eat that. I should. Oh, it expired. Well, let's open it. Let's check it out. <laughs> but, uh, let's open it. Well, well whatever. I'm feeling peckish. <laughs> <laughs> while, while, you're on, while you're on the yogurts, um, the the new one, um, shit, what's it called? It comes in the glass jar. Uh, we? It's like the French custard yogurt. That shit's really good. Uh, we? Have to try that out. <laughs> yeah, it's in the glass jar yet. with the foil top. Like, I implore you to get that one. Um, with the foil top, that's probably what I won't let go past the expiration date. <laughs> in a glass jar with a foil top? <laughs> you better eat that today. <laughs> Alright, so while we're on this, um, I wanted to uh, hit on a couple other... Uh, we were listening to a book today. This is a, this is actually not... I didn't write this down today, so you guys know. I just made you kind of start listening to the book today because I... Because you already had this planned. Yeah. You know, this, is, this is Jason not telling us anything about what's going on. <laughs> but hey, listen to this for a minute while we uh, try to figure this other thing out. And like, so um, holidays, because we just passed the holiday yesterday, um, it being Easter and all. So uh, holidays in the kitchen, like. I love how your neighbors always have to look and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. They, they drive by, they're like, hey, it's in my dad! Like, <laughs> like, Shout out to those. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. That wasn't even the most. Yeah. Oh. Uh, holidays, <laughs> somebody from the end of the street. I, holidays, <laughs> holidays in, in the kitchen, I think. What, what, first off, what do you mean? There are no holidays in the kitchen. Like, days <laughs> off? I don't know what those are. I'm talking about the holidays for everyone else that you have to prepare for. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Because I've been in some... Hey, we have a busy day. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in some some good places where, you know, they're, you just roll along like a normal day. And then I've been in places where it's like this crazy production where you're doing like this whole Easter brunch or, you know, a Thanksgiving, like, we're going to seat fucking 2,000 people today in Thanksgiving like, and you're running this crazy-ass buffet that took you two weeks to get everything together and prepare. Um, my question to you guys is, like, how do you guys feel about even, like, these restaurants being open on holidays? Because there's some restaurants that are open that don't even do business, but they're just there because they're open. This is one of the few times I'm jealous of working at Chick-fil-A. 
<laughs> you'd, have been off off. On, you'd have been off on Easter. <laughs> you'd have been, they ain't open on Sunday. You ain't working Easter. Uh, I'm pretty sure they probably close for Christmas regardless of what day it's on. Like, I'm I'm not sure about Thanksgiving, but I, I've definitely had to prepare mass amounts of food for holiday ventures. Uh, and I, I think the only real thing that... I, I mean, I feel like restaurant people get screwed a lot of the times. A lot of the times. Like we, Absolutely. We, we, we get screwed. That mic's not on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we get screwed a lot of the times because we prepare food for all of you that... Don't work in the... I was going to say you're too lazy to prepare food for yourselves and I was going to stop myself, but no, I won't. For those of you that don't feel like cooking... Get on this soapbox, right? sir! For those of you that don't feel like cooking Thanksgiving dinner and you go, oh, we're going to take like 18 people to this restaurant. Fuck you! All right? Like... I want to have Thanksgiving with my family, too. <laughs> like, I'm here working. I ate Thanksgiving dinner at 10.30 this morning because I had to work a 5 o'clock shift for all of you assholes that wanted to come out. Or I had Thanksgiving the day after Thanksgiving. Or the day before, regardless. Like, yeah, I'd love to spend a holiday with my family. I don't even know what that is anymore. I, I was supposed to spend it with my family yesterday because I was off. And then I had to go to work. I was supposed to go in at 5. I had to go in at 3. So my Thanksgiving dinner... Turned into like Thanksgiving lunch because thankfully my dad had already put the ham in the oven. So, like, the main course was pretty much ready by the time I got to the house. But what happened to like the bullshitting and let's spend family time together? No, it was like, hey, I gotta eat because I gotta go. Like, no, no time before. <coughs> what happened was. What had happened was. You wanna join us? We got another mic. You wanna come sit down? Join us on a podcast, sir. You want to be on the podcast? Yeah, buddy. This is actually a good friend of ours from across oh. the street. Yeah. I was wondering who you're yelling at. Oh, we're from each other. <laughs> everyone that's listening. Anyone and everyone. Well, I'm going to have to calm it down. <laughs> good luck. I mean, good I'm turning up mics if you want to be on. <laughs> what the hell? Like, here, I'll slide over here. You girls. see here. But yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think restaurant people get screwed on holidays. We just... Most oh, restaurants are open. You have to work them. And... I admit, some restaurants try to do like the, my family's in, you know, California, and I live in Virginia, so why don't you guys take today off, and I'll work, and I, I think that a lot of the times, the big boss ends up with the day off, just because... Apple. Usually, yeah, usually. Yeah, I... Because he writes the check. So, like, yeah, he, he writes, writes the, the check. Schedule, that's right. He writes the damn check most of the time. Yeah, that's true, too, so, but, I don't know, I, it's, it's disappointing that... My check. I'm not, dude. Just, we're just gonna roll you can with see it. it. Yeah, it's right okay. there. I'm not gonna mic check in the middle of it. Cause, him. I'm saying because that one was off. So <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Now. Either way, I, I mean, I think that's. I think it's about my rant. That's I'm, no. I mean, I'm, I think I'm, you're 100 like, percent accurate in the fact that, like, you know, a lot of times people get screwed. It, it's because the role has changed, where everything is 24 seven, 365, and like, so you instead of going to be with your family like everyone else is and they show up you know with 18 people because they didn't want to unannounced yeah because they didn't want to cook and they didn't want to clean so like oh we'll just meet over here and do this thing and now like you just created more work for somebody because you want to have a good time and a chef told me a long time ago he's like think about it this way every time somebody else is having a good time Somebody There's another not, person yeah. who is not having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're out here having a good time with your there's family on Thanksgiving, for it. Yeah. and then on the other side, there's you know what in the in the story we were listening to today. There's twelve cooks in the kitchen because Sally said we're gonna need them, and there's <laughs> nothing sitting around doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> like so, yeah. As far as like the holidays go, and it's every holiday, like it's every holiday, like even like. I mean, how do you? How would you feel about a restaurant that runs like bank, like your every holiday you're off? I'd love to be off by five every day, but that's just not realistic. So <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> the, the holiday the, every holiday the, you're the off. school and bank holiday schedule. Yeah. Do we get like the Monday after off too? Because that would be just dope. Yeah, like if the but, bank's not open today, neither are we. Because <laughs> like, guess what? I can't put that money anywhere anyway. Like uh, I. The only thing I really want to stress about holidays is, like, for those of you that do have those 18 people that you're going to take out because you don't want to cook, make a fucking reservation. Oh, yeah. those That's always a plus. We, we worked at a place where we did smoked turkeys. Oh, yeah. Hell but yeah. you had to pre-order. Hell yeah. Like, you had to call in and be like, hey, 
I'm gonna want a smoked turkey. And we were only open that day actually till like what two? Like we were only there. Yeah, we were only in the there. We were only for there. Pick-ums. Yeah, so that you can come and get your smoked turkey. Like, and and I feel like that's you minimal know, that's staff. Like, minimal yeah. staff. We're only there till two. Like I could li- I could do that. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. All right, so guys, uh, I'll be off around two thirty. You know, like, like you tell your family, like, hey, you're gonna have to do most of the cooking. But I'm help pretty with the sure it was just like, me and you that were there that day. Yeah, it was just you and me. And we just they showed up. We ran their credit card, handed them a turkey, and they left. And as a matter of fact, I think we actually ended up finishing by like noon, twelve thirty. Yeah, because people all came the early. Were yeah. done, so it was like all right. But we're we out also of here. we also did sides and crap. Like we did like yeah. the full Thanksgiving meal in a company in that. Like so you could pick it up and take it home. Fine, if you want to pay X amount of dollars to do that. If that's like okay, we know what's going to happen. We right. already know pre-order or reservation. Like you know what's coming. I was going to say, it's it's a holiday, right? It, you yeah. you expect it, right? You you expect that I'm going to have to cook a shitload and family's going to come over and it's going to be difficult and you know we're going to have some fun conversations about you know. Buttholes and uh, <laughs> that's I mean, that's probably what's going on in the kitchen. I just want you all to know. Yeah, they're that having that conversation. Hey, chefs do not have buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, is that it's family. Yeah, everyone right? wants to it's, go and be it's with their holidays. Yeah. It's fucking well. family, dude. They, if you don't expect it, then you're a dumbass. You know. Yeah. So you're going somewhere, and people that, are you should at, expect it, right? Still sucks. As a restaurant, like when no, a but you walks should in, expect like, it. So you, it shouldn't suck because you expect it, right? Ah, uh, it goes like you get ah, uh, like oh god, mobs coming over. Uh. Right, like <laughs> to, to, for, for me, over. busy or not, like if you're Son working bitch. a holiday, it just sucks. Cheers, motherfucker. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, got, it, guess. it goes <laughs> either way on a holiday, though. Like, watch the watch the mixer. <laughs> <laughs> Easter in particular is one of those like you're either going to be dead slow, or, or you're going to be shit. slammed. There's there's really like as a restaurant, you don't know what to predict. I've worked in a place that actually went through the transition of being busy as shit for Easter to it slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Beamer, don't he didn't come over here with don't you. Fuck around. He didn't come with you. Yeah, he did. Oh. So, did he? it's progressively got slower to the point where they were no longer turning a profit so that they stopped hey. Easter. Yeah, does that feel good? <laughs> <laughs> Not good in my head front of your <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, I mean, that's... I've witnessed it, like, where they just stopped doing it because they were no longer turning a profit. I at least feel like, though, like, holiday hours. You know, like, as a restaurant, you don't want to shut down, fine. Like, Pick the beginning of the day or the end of the day. Like, if it's Thanksgiving and you want to be open for dinner, at least give your staff off the morning. And I get there's a morning and a night crew, but, like, if you know you're going to be busy, you're almost going to, like, you're adding a third to your crew. Yep. So, guess what? Like, all right, guys, well, we're not going to open for the morning so that, you know, you guys can at least have brunch, lunch-ish time with your family. Like, you got to come in at five. Guess what? You can eat at two. Yeah, but see, my it issue... It still sucks. This is a great segue, because then my issue is that. It's like, when I'm with my family, and we're hanging out, and we're doing all kinds of cool shit, I want to have a drink. Well, so, that sucks on Thanksgiving in particular. Maybe you just open for the morning on Easter, and then you get drunk at night, but... So, <laughs> sweet-ass segue is drinking on the job. Because, you like, if you're going to have a couple drinks before you go to said work establishment... Where are, you, where are you at? Because, like, you say, like, okay, we're going to be open late, uh, or we're going to open later, but everybody was already with their family. Already, like, so I, I venture to say 75% of your staff had some sort of drink before they, before got, they there. got there. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe. Uh. That's, a, that's a tough, that's a tough yeah. line right there. And like, I mean, okay, so now there, I have worked in establishments. I've done it before. <laughs> I, I have worked in establishments where, like, you know, when it got toward the end of the night, you know, the cooks had a drink while they were, you know, finishing up the last orders, uh, cleaning the kitchen. Like, there's a gray area, you know what I mean? Like, what, I've been in establishments where, like, you got 
fucking butt fucked for dinner, and it's like nine thirty. The rush is over, and the chef comes through with a tray of shots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like so. You like it's a very great area. We're not going to mention those establishments. No, for well, very never, specific never, reasons, but we'll never, ever, ever say that. But like, I've worked in an establishment that didn't have a liquor license, but there was beer in the cooler. Like for at the end of the night, while you were cleaning up, that was last orders. Like no one could touch, no one could touch them until about nine o'clock. Like that was like dinner the time. service is done. Dinner like, service already, right. and I, this establishment closed at ten thirty. So about 9 o'clock, you know, you have a beer, and you start to clean everything up and get it all together. You know, the dishwasher's a little happier now, even though he's got a stack of shit to do, but he's got a beer. You know what I mean? Like It's your reward. Yeah, it's your right. reward. So, like, you know, you have two, three beers at work before you hit the road and go home. But like, how, how do you deal with someone coming in like that? I feel like that's a little different story. Because, I mean, like, all right. <laughs> hey, we still haven't gone through dinner service yet. Yeah, like, you, you came in two to three drinks in. Now it's kind of a problem. Like, now, okay, like, but now it's that area that we're going into. How and, like, long was it? Like, did you have two to three drinks in an hour? Did you have did two you, or three drinks? Did you have two or three drinks five hours ago? Well, right. Here, like, but here's the thing, right? If it if you okay. establish that culture at the end of the night, then why is it not cool at the beginning of the night? There are you, rules, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but no, without I, rules, this would be anarchy. But <laughs> you're you're fostering that culture. As Since you are part. in the throes of yard work, sir, let's say that you got up at ten o'clock this morning and drank three beers. Do you think you would be as productive in your yard work as you have been so far? Did you drink three beers this morning? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, you should have cleared I that first. Started with that. <laughs> <laughs> no beers, sir. Four, you, four beers. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, actually, I had four. Like, How dare you, fucking? Especially when you're talking about. <laughs> People cooking people's food, like you got to make sure it's right. You're providing like, a service or something. You are, and I, it you're not as productive if you come in. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll I use, mean, like, we'll use us. We we'll use us for an like, example. You we come use, in inebriated. You know? We we'll use us for an example. Uh, we're probably a good example. Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah, we are a perfect example of what not to do. Um, yeah, like on on Mondays when we're doing Team Facket, and yeah, do we have a couple of drinks before you ever get started? Absolutely. Like we are the worst examples of this scenario, so I'm going to use us because we're talking about us. Sometimes we are way more productive. It's our oil for our machine. Type thing. Like, <laughs> it's but that liquid courage. I think a lot of it gets into legal issues though. Yeah, but we're also not serving anyone. No one is paying us to do anything. We're doing this out of our own free time. And if it was, if there were a Team Facket restaurant, we would not be doing this. No, we would not be drinking. We would not be drinking in the middle of the day while we're smoking your pig. Which at sounds, night, which kind of hurts to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, though. I feel like we'd be busier. Like, Oh, yeah. I mean, be, like, yeah. This is fun for us, not work. It's a little bit of both. But we would be, like, actually busier. Like, we can kind of create our own schedule here. If it was work, like, okay, you, you got to yeah, talk to the table. We have shit to really do. Define like, busier. <laughs> busier than we are right now, sitting at a table, talking into a microphone? Nah, <laughs> I get, yeah, I get it. I'm so busy right now. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't like, even know. The question is, like, is there a double standard for front of the house and back of the house? Because no, I okay. That that brings up another point. Like, again, okay, legal issues. Okay, like, you so, can't serve so we're talking about we're talking about alcohol. Like, then there's like the pot issue, and then you got your crackheads, and we had that whole crackhead story on the podcast. <laughs> like, you know, when you're cracking out and falling on the floor, and they got to call an aunt. Hey, guess what? You probably should have did that before you came to work. Like, <laughs> it's like. And so there's uh, there's a level of responsibility yeah, for everyone. You shouldn't pump the heroin. And yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't pump the heroin. <laughs> Which is a great segue to this yeah, new fad. This new fad going around, which I just heard about the other day um, on another podcast I was listening to. Uh, <laughs> it's called uh, Richard Blaze Starving for Attention. It's the podcast. I don't know why I'm promoting another podcast on our podcast, but. Anyway, I was listening to them, and they, there's a thing called the caviar bump now. And so, basically, like, doing a bump of coke off your hand, they didn't want to say coke. They were like, you know, like an illicit substance that you're going to, like, they would, like, literally, someone walks around with a tin of caviar, and they put it on your hand, and you eat it off your hand, 
Like you would Sniff do a line it. of cocaine? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the caviar bump is a thing now. And then so I had talked to Alex about the caviar bump and I was like, hey, his uh, so molecular I heard, dystronomy. I heard about this. So we are going, Apparently like, I, I, I'm all about trends and I want to see what it's about. So, uh, we'll do a caviar bump later on because I have caviar in the fridge. Of course you do. And then... <laughs> I have I, caviar in my fridge. Well, what, what I wanted to talk to Alex about was like when we do the, the molecular <coughs> astronomy, um, making caviar. Right. Like when we make... Is it black caviar? Or? Yeah, it's black. Um, when we got the good stuff. When we make... <laughs> Well, if we're gonna do a damn course. caviar bump, like if we're right? gonna do a bump, get the good stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this that's is a weird strange, conversation, but so a, Alex, I want to work with Alex, and so Team Fat Kid, we're yeah, gonna right. create the caviar bump in the Team Fat Kid way. So I have a thought process that I haven't. You're gonna put a jalapeno on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. We're gonna we put jalapeno. Do we're jalapeno gonna put jalapenos like, in it, like. <laughs> But I was thinking more like, oh yeah, we're gonna get the Reapers and we're gonna make a Reaper bump, like <laughs> basil <laughs> Reaper. Uh, okay, right, right, right. Jason, uh, you can't okay. see my face because of the pop filter, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been over here for a while, guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be doing. We're, we're gonna not try today. It. Don't worry. Yeah. That's little, not happening today. Little, little powder bump, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get your makeup right. Get your makeup right. I'll be right back. I just have to powder my nose. I, guess. I was just about to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a I had a boss who was like, "I wonder what cocaine smells like," and I was like, "You probably shouldn't. <laughs> 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 probably shouldn't try to find out." Yeah, it's probably not a good curiosity. <laughs> it's like, can, can can you smell it? <laughs> like, mm. like I, was, I was just trying to smell the officer. I was just trying to smell it. I was just trying to see what it smelled like. Say even, hello to my little friend! <laughs> that peeped so hot on that. <laughs> All her mayors. Are <laughs> oh, well, well, hopefully it doesn't sound like that on the podcast. But. Mm-hmm. All right, so we went, we, went, we went a really long way from Easter. <laughs> we, went, we went from holidays and Easter and Thanksgiving mm-hmm. to doing bumps of caviar. <laughs> well, I mean, it's something I heard by on another podcast by a chef that I that inspires me, and that brings me up to our next point. I love how this all tied together really well. Um, it's like you know what like, topics you're yeah, talking like, about. It's like I already know and how we're going to get there. Um, but you never know with this conversation. No, we definitely have some great like, conversations. Yeah, we never know with this conversation and how we're going to get to where we're getting. But like chefs that inspire you, whether they're you know uh, a TV personality or someone that you've worked with, um, I think this is a good story. Um, so, I mean, I was just talking about Richard Blaze and they're talking about the... Damn caviar bump! Like I was like, oh, that kind of inspired me to take it to a different place, and maybe not necessarily. Well, I was already <laughs> I already plugged his, his podcast on our podcast because I was like, uh, why am I telling everybody this? <laughs> like, I'm just going to promote somebody else's podcast on our podcast. Um, but so he went and said, you know, they did the caviar bump and at some festival they were at, and it made me think, like, well, what? If we did caviar, but not fish eggs, like when we did, the like, jelly. yeah, like, so I, being inspired by chefs, I mean, that's kind of like what one thing <laughs> leads to why the fuck, Dooley. <laughs> so like one chef Sign inspires up. another Sign one, up. and so like they had talked about you know a chef who was gonna create a dish from he looked at a painting and he's like, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a lamb, a rack of lamb, and I'm gonna wrap it with a pigeon. And I was like, that sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> like, so, like, it's another chef inspiring another chef, and then I hear the story, and then, like, I'm like, well, how the hell do we make caviar that's not fish eggs? And I'm then, stuck on how the fuck do you wrap a lamb rack and pigeon. With a pigeon. Like, that's gotta be one big. Is this New York pigeons? <laughs> <laughs> this has gotta be one big ass pigeon, bro. This is this flying bread? Bread? Like, what is it? Wob. Like, <laughs> So, you I mean, mean, like an albatross for that <laughs> shit. Like, I mean, from what I understand, they, they completely deboned it. And, like, they, when they were talking about it, they hadn't eaten it yet. They just know what they're going to go eat after their podcast. And I was like, you guys already know this is happening? Like, 
And in my mind, like, I guess they were, like, weaving it through the bones or whatever. Like, I don't know how this... I, like, Richard Blaze, if you pick us up on your podcast, like, shoot us a picture so we can see what the hell they look like. Because we are interested. Like, but, so, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm totally down to the whole molecular gastronomy with the... And Richard Blaze is big into the... They do call it... They still call it caviar, even in the molecular gastronomy, even though it's not fish eggs. Uh, but it, it looks the same. It's... You can basically turn anything into a jelly and make it into a tiny little ball, and you make, you know, 40 of them. Now you have, like, a caviar set of balls. Uh, <laughs> so The tiny uh, balls. The tiny balls. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think they make a lot of... It, you seem interested in what? The balls. The balls. Uh, they make a lot of desserts <laughs> with them and stuff like that. Like, basil is definitely a very common one that I've seen. And I think they even do, like, what they call Citrus. cake balls, which is basically just, like, a sugar-clear ball of jelly, which is weird, because, like, it, I think it pops so not, not, when you eat it. It's not weird. like a cake pop, though. Like no. A, like, a like, there's no stick or anything involved. It's, it's just, like, it looks like a crystal ball. It's just clear, jelly-ish ball, and... Like you, you, I, you eat it. It's you guys can't see Alex. It's like jawbreaker size, like I guess. Trying yeah, to I, explain I, what jelly is to <laughs> a microphone. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you? I mean, it's still it's like like in certain Asian dishes, tapioca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. Now the real question is like, does That's it? That's what I'm like thinking. Like, uh, yeah, I, like I'm yeah, still so curious. Like, like, in the bubble teas and shit, does it pop? Or is Have it you like have bubble do, you, tea? do you bite it? I imagine like like. like what the bubble tea? No, I'm talking about the sugar cake. Like, oh, oh, what? Well, you're yeah. I don't know anything about I'm, that. Like, I'm curious. <laughs> that's that's like a really big caviar jelly. Oh, so it's like a like a like maybe golf ball size? No, it's like jawbreaker. Like the, you know, the oh, really okay. big jaw, it's like yeah. that big. And so, like, does it like pop when you like? Do, do I don't you know? I'm do curious. Do you pick it up and eat it like an apple, or do you use silverware? No, you pick it up and eat it like an apple. Oh wow! So like, is it? I it's weird. I don't know. So it's like Jello. Yeah, in but a spherical form. <laughs> it's, it's just sugar jello. I yeah, in a spherical form. It, and it tastes like cake. Well, it's a, they call it a, a cake caviar. But I don't whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I was just, now, I, now I'd have to look it up. Now it's been a while, but I was intrigued by it, and still am intrigued by it, especially since I'm talking about like, does it pop in your mouth? <laughs> <Dig it. laughs> does it, Alex? Does it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got so many jokes. Maybe it'd be better if I did, because there could be even more jokes. Okay, so back to back to chefs that inspire you. Like, is there any one chef that you work for or that you follow in a sense that, like, you take, like, their ideas and move on from there? <laughs> okay, so Dooley is not getting my... Do you want this one question off microphone? No, because so all I let him look at him, he's got his nose. Nose, right. yeah, he looks like a fucking Porky the Pig over here. Uh, I'll take this one first. Uh, it is I, definitely his microphone now. Oh, it's, it's, it's will thank God be it's mine. been his microphone. Because uh, I bought it. So. <laughs> I have been inspired by many chefs, and I'm not going to lie, TV personalities are up there. Like They do a lot of things publicly, so you get to see them more often. Right. But I think the most influential chef has been someone that I worked for. Um, he did get to go overseas. Um, he kind of caught me at a transition in my restaurant phase and taught me a lot. So, like, he was probably the person who influenced me the most. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily where your question's going. No, I mean, this isn't an interview. I was just trying to spark a conversation. Oh, hey. But, like, he, he definitely taught me the most and has... Kind of, I, I'd say formed a lot of my thought processes. Okay. So, but I've been inspired so what you, by So what did you take away from that individual? French kitchens. And in particular, that's that's definitely what I took away. Uh, what I mean by a French kitchen is you try and utilize everything. So a lot of restaurants, like when you're cutting down tomatoes or celery or vegetables in particular, you throw away the core or the top or the bottom, or whatever you're not using. Um in a French kitchen, you use that to try and make your own stock. So you make vegetable yeah, stock from your know. leftovers. Yeah, no. And same thing with fish. Like, if you're pulling bones or the, any beef the, or whatever, or the, like... The salmon belly. Yeah. yeah, like, guess what? That's... Make your own broth. Yep. So, I mean, like, in particular, stock is a great way to do it, but 
there's a lot of waste that happens in kitchens, so, so which is learned, food cost. So you learned that from that individual? I did. I, I learned that oh, yeah. from this individual, and uh, that's probably the, the biggest thing that I've taken away from it. I it's, can't say that we a good thing, stay but... true to that to these days, because I, I think we give a lot of bones to dogs in particular these days. Uh, but I mean, hey, the dog needs... The dog needs bones, and we don't have time to make beef stock a lot, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure, though, that I still have, like, a pound of crab leg scraps in my freezer right now <laughs> that are definitely going to become oh. seafood stock. Oh, yeah. Point, I mean, you know? I keep... I keep. That's a good all, thing that... I mean, like, the turkey that we cook today, like, you know, you take the neck and you take the... I'm good. You giblets. The, yeah, you take all that and then <laughs> you turn that into gravy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, you cook all that down. I mean, there's a reason why they leave that in the turkey. Yeah. Like, because they could just as easily turn it into another marketing boy. Like, you know chicken gizzards like you can just go buy gizzards you can go buy livers you can go buy i mean i'm pretty sure you can buy chicken necks i don't know i never really shot for chicken necks but i know you can buy chicken feet um like so it's, chicken feet is definitely a thing I yeah still chicken feet is a thing one. i mean they they say they're delicious i mean i've eaten a chicken foot i, mean, I don't think i have that's, that's uh, you I have know it was yeah. in a gravy like they say like you know the collagen in the foot like thickens the gravy the gravy and then, like then you just got this like Foot just kicking out in your soup, and like you pick it up and nibble on it, like you know, like you got some serious. I gotta pick my teeth. Like that little, that little. You got uh, some serious foot. Yeah, the, the claws foot, still foot there and everything. Foot like they just like lop that bitch off and throw it in a bag and you buy them. Anyway, that's like. I mean, it's not, it, is it any different? Like you're giving me the ugly face, but it's no different than no, buying that, pig's feet. That was me feet. stretching. That was not an ugly face. Oh. That was. It's I, no that's different than pig, pig's feet, pig's tail, like pig ears. Like you're using every part. Like, like, like all I, of it. I mean. I'm really curious, so they call that French kitchen, but, like, in America, wouldn't it be, like, Indian kitchen? Like, in, uh, no, I mean... Native I mean, Americans were doing that for years. Like, we would have used every part of everything. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They wore like, it. I like, gosh. I killed this fox. Yeah, let me... And now I made a hat. Like... <laughs> <laughs> a hat and a pair of socks. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're the warm, fuzzy kind. Dooley, who, in, who inspired you? Um, has, does, will... I guess thank you, Dooley. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, <kidding. laughs> that is my life here on Two Packet. That is my life. Dooley, what are you doing with us? Ah, uh, fuck you. So, <laughs> Actually, I think he was saying that he inspires you, so thank you for being... Yeah, yeah, anyway. Uh, so, two of them. Uh, one would be, I mean, the obvious. Me. Mm-hmm. Gordon ahead. Ramsay. I'll take okay. <laughs> Chef, and, chef Ramsay. And the uh, other one would be uh, my chef from culinary school, uh, my butcher teacher. Because <clears throat> he taught us butcher, uh, mother sauces, knife skills, this, that, and third, like his own little tricks on everything. So he kind of helped bring everything together for me. Like, because I went in culinary school burning boiling water. So <laughs> that's fucking impressive. That, 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 that's my little metaphor for I understand. <laughs> Freeze it. Save it for later. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, Put it in the ice well, cream. At least he taught you how to boil. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, he was the first chef I had, and then like, he kind of like took me under his wing once we got to butchery. Like, I was his sous chef in butchery class. And uh, he was like, yeah, you're, you're going to go a long way on this. So I'm going I'm to kind of teach you my little tricks of the trade. So, he helped me out a lot. Um, actually, the other one, uh, Finn's, I just name dropped there, but <laughs> it's uh, Big D. Okay. Finn's. Like, first chef I worked under and everything like that, so I mean, he kind of, he was more the uh, abrasive, like, why the fuck aren't you doing this shit now? Like, why aren't you doing, like, you should be doing like 15 of these, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I was like, okay, so this is where speed comes into play with the cooking, so. But, I mean, Gordon Ramsay, that's just, I mean, because, like, his fire, his, like, expertise on everything, so. <clears throat> anyway, well, he, he has Michelin stars. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, like, those little simple videos that he has, like, how he broke down a, an entire lobster and, like, placed it oh, all yeah, over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, just those the YouTube videos. He has really good, informative YouTube videos, and, like, I mean. And the, he won't yell at you during this. Oh, like, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like, I'm, I'm he, still, breaks, he breaks simple things down, like how to on. make a proper yeah. pot of rice. He said, Gordon Ramsay, and then secondarily, somebody that didn't yell at him. 
Okay, so so Gordon, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay, who like with his educational shit on top of yelling, and then What's up? other chef that showed me tricks of the trades or everything like that, and then the other dude who taught me how to actually work in a kitchen. <laughs> but uh, those are my three, pretty much. Like help help me kind of like more into the chef I am. So and notice how we started with two and like the three. Yeah, and I walked forgot about that third one. But and then you know, of course, Jason. Of course. <laughs> wow. All right, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Alex doesn't talk shit. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, like in my life, yes. Um, I mean, I watch a lot of food TV, so I mean, I get inspiration from. All kind, like I get inspiration from chefs. I don't even know their damn names because they're just like a quick segment or whatever in another program. Um, so I I pull from a lot of different areas. I, I don't think there's like any one singular person who inspires me more or less. Um, like when you talk about the inspirational point, but like when you talk about like people who have actually taught you things. Like, you know, I go back to, like, chefs that I work for, and, like, some of them taught me really good things, some of them taught me shit I wish I could forget, you know, <laughs> like, but that's burned in there, you know what I mean? And, like, like even, like, all the way down to, like, their attitude and how they presented themselves, it, it it's all the same thing to me. Yeah. Which also, I feel like, Arthur... <laughs> Arthur is a great teacher for anyone that wants to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Arthur also brings in like he's a, a great, lot of I mean, knowledge. Like, here's the thing, though. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go with he's just a great teacher. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Arthur's an asshole, but if you can put up with him being an asshole, like Arthur would make a great chef. So in the in, like in you, what you think of as you a don't chef. learn you don't learn anything from somebody that's too nice. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, he kind of goes opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, you, know like, I mean? you like, burn you... boiling water and they slap you on the ass and tell you did a good job. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, not, not, not that kind of learning. Granted, you weren't allowed to do that in culinary <laughs> school. <laughs> no, you, <don't laughs> you, could, like, you couldn't be like, "Fuck res- you!" It doesn't like. resonate, right? If you, you go, uh, "Oh, you did such a good job. Oh, you're such." You, <laughs> it, well, I, and I got some stories. <laughs> you're such a great employee. No, it's like, no, oh, fuck that. Tighten up. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's how get you Get your learn. shit it's together. All, yeah, get your Bug ass. and bend over, make the pop noise, and get your fucking head out of your ass, because <laughs> these people are still coming, whether or not you fuck right. the sauce up or not. Now you got to start over. <laughs> like, sorry. I mean, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's how you learn, though, right? No, absolutely. And you don't learn uh, when it's easy. I feel like you don't though, learn like, when it's easy in this day and age. Like chefs aren't what they used to be. <clears throat> what I mean by that is like when I say Arthur would make a great chef, Arthur is definitely the like in your face. Like you just fucked up. <laughs> like you can't say that anymore. Like you have to be stern, but you can't be like you can't, harsh. You can't say that. Yeah. yeah. You Oops. shouldn't say that anymore. Go with that. People yeah, are very uh, soft nowadays. Yeah, like, you get your pussyfooting around. Yep. But I mean, like you have to be stern, but you can't be like, you can't be in anybody's face anymore. Arthur's definitely an in-your-face type of individual. Like <laughs> you just fucked that up. There's no like two questions about it. He's just like you fucked that up. And I think it's gotten into you some call trouble. that scrambled eggs. Yeah, you right. Call that scrambled eggs. That's <laughs> Those are burnt eggs. Those aren't scrambled. <laughs> But I mean, like, I, I, I feel like it's, shit. it's gotten him into trouble before, but he really is, he's a good teacher on that. Like, he will be in your face and be like, you screwed that up. There's no two ways about it. And if he said screwed instead of fucked, he'd probably be fine. But let's face it. Arthur does not say screwed. Arthur, Arthur is in your face. <laughs> he does not say screwed. Arthur is in your face. And although he uses more, I, you know, he's Gordon Ramsay-ish. He really is. Like, he's yeah. definitely the in-your-face person. He doesn't have quite as many well-formed jokes, but he uses a lot of metaphors. So if he went with jokes instead of metaphors, maybe he'd be famous by now. I don't know. The, 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 the one thing I absolutely hated when me and Arthur were first starting to work together, because we bumped heads so many fucking times, like, the one thing I absolutely hated was when he started talking, and he did and you're like, shh, I want to hit you so hard in the face with this spatula, like, he just... But was he right? About whatever you were cooking. I don't care about the conversation. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. That's the reason That's the reason why I fucking hate him Because I'm like mm, Fucker Like you're right like, Why are you always right He's an asshole 
But he's right. Like, <laughs> but I, you the, know? The, there was one time when I was uh, cutting something, and I think it was like cucumber or some shit like that, and then just because me and Arthur already had some like bad blood type of shit like that, like the day before, he kicked me out of the kitchen. He was like, go the fuck on, like, fuck off. <laughs> and then... <laughs> That's probably exactly what was said. Like, you know, no, no, that, it's pretty much exactly... Go the fuck on, fuck off. <laughs> but... But so I let like the next day like Kurt told me hey we're gonna cut him like this save like it, hey it was oh yeah name drop keep going and, but <laughs> but uh, so he said you know hey we're gonna cut him like this because you know better shelf life type of shit like that so Arthur comes around he's like who the fuck told you to cut that like that I'm like Kurt he's like oh really goes right up to the bar and then he's like. Oh, I know. So name drop. I only name drop one. So yeah. At, just, at this point, it's lost consequences. <laughs> yeah, it's a moot point. But like, but anyway, so like he walks out there to the bar and starts talking to him, and then he comes back. He's like, "All right, Dilly. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. Fine." And then just walks away. I'm like, "Well, is he about to kick me out again today?" Yeah, like, I can see Arthur doing that. Yeah. Just like, yeah, fine, I'm not. I'm not fine, gonna say I'm wrong. Fine, like, just oh. oh. Okay. Fine. Just fine. 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 I'm gonna smoke. Fine. 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 <laughs> Do it your way. <laughs> no, no, he said yeah. that. <laughs> no, do, 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 do it. Do it. Do it. He totally you noticed it, and you remembered it. Well, I'm oh. curious now. At this point in time, even though you were told no, to do that, do you think it was right, or do you think that our right. I mean. Oh, ho! Yeah, I was like, honestly, <laughs> yeah, in my head, I was siding. Well, I was siding with Arthur. In right? my head, I mean, but your your boss told you to do it one way. You you you, you got to follow the instructions. Says, you know? yeah. Yeah, if Jason tells me to do something at work, then I'm gonna be like, all right, well. So <laughs> in fact, I can tell Dooley not to do something, and he does it any fucking way. And he's like, oh, I thought you said to do it, and I was like. What, like I walk back, like, what the fuck are you doing? I just told you not to do that, and he's like, "Oh, I thought you said to do it." Like, we know he has selective hearing. He knows <laughs> half of this podcast. You're like in the room. Yeah. Do it. Cut it this way. What the fuck are you doing? I'm cutting it. Like, yeah, but I don't. You cut it the other way. I'm like, just, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's how you learn, right? Dooley's still learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a mistake. It's a learning experience. It's a learning experience. I thought you yeah. said no, to do general. it. General. Why the fuck would I tell you to do that? All right, guys. That's the end of this podcast. Um, <laughs> the next one should be coming out on Thursday, right? I guess it depends on how we're recording it. So yeah, we'll so see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You might get it later today. Yeah, like, you know, just save one for now and save one for later. We got some fancy new equipment. Yeah, that's, we're still trying. We're to learning, out. experiencing it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not a mistake. Learning. If you've heard static all throughout, I've been trying to mediate from that shit. Yeah, he's he's t- <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. So. Once while, again, while guys, still having me actually in there, like, because <laughs> it's all my microphone, of course, because damn Dooley, that's why. So, <laughs> well, once again, guys, thank you for listening. We appreciate everything you do, and for all of our non-sponsors, remember you can find us at TeamFatCaseNation.com. <laughs> our email address is www. No, not www. No, yeah, no, you, yeah, got no, that back. That, yeah, yeah, TeamFatCaseNation.com. Yeah. You. you can find us on Twitter. Our handle is at TeamFatCase One. Bacon. Our Instagram, <laughs> our Instagram is Team Fat Kid Nation. Our Facebook is just it's it's Team Fat Kid, and our YouTube is Team Fat Kid. Guess what? You type in Team Fat Kid, we'll You'll pop up. Us. We'll pop your podcast. We'll our we'll pop up on every platform now. We are now on your favorite podcast app. And Thank you guys, as always. Here's a great ending to our podcast. Freedom, Freedom flying over one more time. <laughs>